Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All Things Middle Earth here with five things that we need in the Rise to War moving forward. Now I've got two points where we get started. Number one, I've been very happy with the state of the game recently and the consistency of updates and communication we have had from the devs. So this is by no means a dogging in the devs video or a negative video. I'm happy with things right now and I want to see them continue and I want to kind of showcase the things that we as a player base think are the most important. So again, this is supposed to be a positive idea sharing video, not a dogging on because I have been happy with the communication and updates lately. Now, speaking of the player base moving forward, if you guys could comment down below, which of these ideas you think is the most important will have the biggest impact in a positive way on the game, please let me know. And if I didn't mention something that you think is a bigger deal than what we talked about today, comment that because I'd like to know where we stand as a player base, because maybe there's something I'm not thinking of or don't usually cover. Um, let me know what you guys think is the biggest thing we need for the game, for the health of the game, for the enjoyment, for your enjoyment as a player. I do want to hear that. So comment that down below so I can compile all that and keep putting a spotlight on these, these, you know, hopefully fewer and fewer things that we want to happen in the game to improve the experience we have as players. But with those two points out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the actual list. Now I will say as sort of a, a qualifier again, before we jump into the actual list, I did not include a respect refund system as an item here because I cover it in a lot of other videos. We talk about it on stream a lot. I've made its own videos for that. so. I do think that's a huge thing. And if that is for you, the biggest thing you think this game needs, then comment that. But that's not included as an item on this list. The actual number one item. And again, these are not in order of, of priority for me. But the first item on the actual list is two new commanders being added to the game, being Balrog and Bard. Now, these commanders specifically I mentioned because over about nine months ago, we were told in the one year anniversary that they were coming to the game. Balrog, we were told, didn't have a timeline, but was going to be coming to the game. And Bard was mentioned along with Bayorn and Oglurk with the same kind of concept art. Uh, and we just haven't heard anything since. So to me, it's kind of odd as a player to be told during a thing as big as a one year celebration that this exciting character is coming to the game and then it not happen. So communication on that point, just letting us know if those are not going to happen or a timeline roughly for new commanders and how often they're coming to the game now, because I definitely slowed that down would be appreciated. Now, again, I think it goes without saying, and there'll be another point on that very soon, but I don't think new commanders should ever come at the expense of old commanders getting worked on because we have a lot of balancing that needs to change. But again, that's a different point. But Balrog and Bard, that is the first point and something that I think would, would be at least very fun for players to get excited about. If it were up to me, I would pick an equally powerful good side character to go along with Balrog and release those. That way good and evil players can get very excited. I know they have rights they have to operate within. So again, whatever that is, I think having some powerful commanders that people could get excited about would be a good a good step in the right direction moving forward with the game for us to feel like we have new content coming out. The next thing was also mentioned in the one year anniversary, almost again, like nine months ago, and it is a sandbox mode. Now, sandbox mode was mentioned as kind of similar to Balrog. Like, yes, this is coming to the game, but we're working on it. It's a little bit on the back burner. They didn't have a date or a time for it, but they were working on it and plan to implement it into the future of the game. And again, since then, we have had no public communication about, about that at all. So to me, a, a sandbox mode allows players to play the game regardless of being in back end or a server being over, whatever it is. So that's already a very good point. And then number two, it allows players to test out commanders before investing thousands of dollars in on gear or respect or whatever it is. Now, as a money making, as a business, I know they want to make money, but as a business, you can't have your only way you make money being like the trial and error of players. It's just going to upset people. And if you have to spend to test something or just wait till other people do it, that slowly you just lose players like that. So I think a sandbox mode that allows some testing so players can have some confidence with what they're doing, um, I think would go a long way in providing just like a healthy relationship between the developers and the player base and people would feel more confident to spend. Now, again, if the, if a sandbox mode makes a lot of commanders look bad and we're realizing that there's a lot of commanders who just underperform, I think that just even more means that we need some, some balancing, which again, I'll get to, uh, but a sandbox mode I think would be a fantastic addition to the game. Now I've alluded to it a few times here, so I'm going to actually do this one now, and that is commander balancing is, is again, I think this could be arguably one of the most important things we need in the game. They are just commanders who do not stack up with other commanders in the game, and it's very, very noticeable. So the meta that we have, the commanders that get used, it's, it's a very small list that can compete with each other, and there are some who, at high respects with good gear, just don't stack up. I'm not saying we need massive overhauls and reworks and all that, but I think some slight adjustments to abilities or new abilities being added to, to certain characters, I think would go a long way. And again, with what I talked about earlier in the game, uh, again, with new commanders coming out, I think before you add new, you need to fix what you have. So I think this point is very crucial for the first two, because if we have a little bit more balance with the commanders we already have, 
then you can add new commanders and have players really enjoy that. Then you can have a sandbox mode and not worry that it's going to shine a spotlight on your bad commanders that are in the game. But instead, it just allows players to see, wow, there's actually a lot of commanders who are viable and I can actually just play with my favorites. So commander balancing, there are enough players in the community who I think for free would probably like to go through and kind of draw up actual like rework ideas that the devs could literally take and implement. Now, again, I'm not a developer. I don't know how the coding works and how simple. I don't think it's as simple as just like clicking a few buttons, but I'm just trying to make the point that I think there's so much in the community, so many people that are very smart that it's not like the devs would need to go from scratch and say, okay, we need to, you know, we need to make here gone better. There are probably lots of people that if the call was put out to say, hey, how can we make here gone a little bit better and, and to perform a little bit better as a tier one commander? What does that look like? You could probably get a lot of really good ideas to, to start that process. So anyway, commander balancing, that's a huge one. You really, really need some of that. And again, a couple two commanders a month. And I think people would be really happy and the game would just start moving forward in a way better direction. Next up is unique items for commanders. Unique items, if you don't know, are a respect 10 item that once you're respect 10, you complete quests and you get me thrill and you unlock these items that are unique to that commander and only that commander. The problem is while being a unique item that is only obtainable by these commanders and some of them is as you move up to tier two and tier three commanders get very, very expensive. There are so many commanders that their item is not the best in slot item for them. So Dwalin is a great example of the twin axes are just are by no means a, a good option. And there are arguments for purple gear being better for him to be used as weapon over his own twin axes. This makes absolutely no sense. And even from a business standpoint, makes no sense because Mithril is expensive. You can buy a small amount every day over a long period of time, especially for tier three commanders, tier two commanders, uh, tier, tier ones are a little bit cheaper, but still if unique items were better, people would spend money. Like this isn't something that, that the, the devs really lose money on. They just, again, if they make a unique better, players are going to use that. And then it also makes some commanders better, which makes commanders more viable, which means people push their respect up. Like overall, I think as a business, they stand to gain a lot from unique items being best in slot for commanders. So if it's a unique item, I absolutely think it should be the best item on that commander in that slot. It just, it would not make sense otherwise. So R10 items, seriously, like, again, for Dwalin, let, whatever the best in slot is, you know, I think people would agree that it's probably a gigantic hammer with Frenzy. You could just copy that and adjust the stats slightly. And I think at least that would be something. But the fact that it's so comparable or even players would rather use purple gear on Dwalin is almost laughable. So let's get the R10 items fixed so people can be excited to invest long term in commanders and then the game makes more money. So it's a win win. Now, the fifth and final entry in this list are events in the game. And I'm not talking about these events like overcoming obstacles, although I guess you could consider this as well. And just like having more of those would probably not be a bad thing. But the events that I am talking about are the events that we used to have monthly or every other month where depending on the time of year in Middle Earth or what's happening just in the real world, we got events in the game that added content to the game. We got things we could do socially with our friends. We had little events or puzzles we could solve and do to unlock rewards. We could get new avatar. I, again, early on, you could explore on tiles and find unique avatars that were that were one time, you know, obtainable in that event for playing that event, whatever it was. We had all kinds of cool stuff with events that I really, really enjoyed, and they are just getting fewer and far between with the different events. So I honestly think if it's possible for them just to copy and paste and do the same events, people would probably be happy with that, at least compared to nothing. The Yule Festival is a good example where all they had to do was copy the Yule Festival from the year before and players would have been happy, but they somehow managed to make that one worse. So they should have a good idea of how events were received because they probably got a lot of feedback on them. If, if it was a well-received event, I would just be re like every year have those coming out at the same time. Uh, there was a Halloween event that would be coming up relatively soon uh, that I think was generally well-received. So I would like to see that come back without major changes that make it worse. If anything, make them better, sure. But like, let's set the bar at least at just maintaining what they were. I think that would be that would be exciting. But it'd be very cool if we had things to look forward to that, you know, once a month or every other month, you're looking forward to an event starting, which means you could save your Mathems for it. You could spend money if you want to. You could get some, some gear or some respect by just playing the event and participating. Uh, it just makes the experience better for everyone. So more events and more quality events that have playable content, I think would be huge. But that is gonna do it for our list of five things that we need to happen in the game moving forward. Again, let me know down below which item you think is the most important, or if I didn't say an option, comment that, because I do wanna see what is the most kind of agreed upon idea for, for you know the player base in terms of what we want in the game. Again, long-term, I'd like to see all these things happening, but I, I understand that things take time. 
uh, and that, that everything kind of impacts the game as a whole. So certain things have to be thought through. I'm okay with that. Uh, but let's just pick one thing. Let's, let's give it some attention and then hopefully get some feedback on why or why not it can't happen or why it's taking a long time, whatever it is. I think a lot of people are pretty reasonable. And if we were told, yes, we're doing this, this is just why it's taking a long time or no, we're not doing this. And this is why I think players are going to at least be able to accept that and move on. Let us, let us kind of grieve if Balrog commander is not coming for whatever reason, or let us still be excited if yes, okay, it is coming. Here's a rough date and timeline. Here's a road ahead or whatever it is. So anyways, that's going to do for this video. Let me know down below what you guys think. And as always, I'll see you in a future one. Uh.